Hello students, welcome to Pi Academy, the place for mathematics and science. Dear students, in yesterday's class, we were discussing the chapter chemical reactions and equations, right? Now let's go for continuing this and remember, this is 8th period of this chapter. In 7th period, we were answering for the questions that are given in exercise. Nearly 5 were answered. Now let's go for continuing this. Dear students, please go through sixth question. It is balance the following chemical equations. Here they are given four unbalanced equations. Now let's go for balancing them. First one, name this compound. Yes, you are right. It is nitric acid. This is calcium hydroxide. See, this is acid and this is base. When acid reacts with base or base reacts with acid, it produces salt and water which is the salt it is calcium nitrate and water okay yes let's go for balancing how do you go for balancing you are going to take an element having maximum number of atoms which one here h1 plus 2 3 nitrogen 1 oxygen 3 plus 1 4 calcium 1 but here you count it is oxygen 2 3s are 6 6 plus 1, 7. Anyhow, uh, to balance the chemical equation, let's go for following hit and trial method. Here, the elements involved are hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and calcium. Right? Then, how many atoms are atoms of hydrogen are there on the reactant side? 1 here plus 2. Next, nitrogen 1, oxygen. 3 plus 2, right? Calcium, only 1. On the product side, hydrogen, here 2 are there. Nitrogen, 2. Oxygen, oxygen, it is 2, 3 are 6. 6 plus 1, 7. So, 6 plus 1. And calcium, it is 1. So which one you will go for taking for balancing? Observe it. Here calcium it is already balanced. Now nitrogen can we go for nitrogen? See here hydrogen atoms are distributed in two two compounds. Even oxygen also. Hence we shall go for nitrogen. What should be multiplied here? It is 2. Where? On reactant side or product side? It is on the reactant side. Here on right, see that. HNO3 plus CaOH twice gives rise to CaNO3 twice plus H2O. Here 2 should be multiplied to the nit nitrogen side. It is here on right. 2. Observe. Now you count. Say, nitrogen atoms, it is balanced. Hydrogen, 2, 1s are 2, plus 2, 4. But here, 2 are there. Hence, I write 2. Clear? Hydrogen is balanced. Then oxygen, 2, 2, 3s are 6. 6 plus 2, 8. Here, 2, 3s are 6. 6 plus 2, 8. Clear? Similarly, calcium, 1 and 1. So, no problem at all. So, it is balanced chemical equation. Hope that you have understood. Next, let's move on to another one. Here also you can observe that. First, you name the compounds. Yes, which is this? Sodium hydroxide. What is its chemical nature? Yes, you are right. This is base. Then, H2SO4 is sulfuric acid. Right? Base reacts with acid to form. Just we came to know that salt and water. What do you call that chemical reaction? Yes, it is neutralization. Then name the salt. It is sodium sulfate. Then water. It should be balanced. How do you go for that? Sodium. Here we cannot take oxygen because it has been distributed. Hydrogen cannot be taken. Sulfur, you just observe, it is already balanced. Only the option is like. Sorry, sodium. Did you understand? See, 
first I'll write the equation NaOH sodium hydroxide plus H2SO4 gives rise to Na2SO4 plus H2O. If the element is distributed in two or more compounds, don't go for taking that. Also, I'll explain it. See that sodium, sodium here also sodium, oxygen. See, oxygen is distributed. Let us not go for taking. Next, hydrogen. That is also distributed. Next, we have only two options. One is sodium and another one is sulfur. Observe sulfur. How many atoms? One. Here, one. So, it is balanced. Next, sodium. Next, we have another chance. That is sodium. Here, one atom of sodium. Here, two atoms of sodium. What should be multiplied? Yes, you are right. This is 2. Observe. Now sodium atom is balanced. Oxygen 2 2 plus 4 6. But here 4. Then what should be multiplied? Here 2. Here oxygen is balanced. Hydrogen 2 2 is 4. 4 hydrogen and here 2 hydrogen plus 2 hydrogen. 4. Next sulfur 1 and 1. So it is the balanced chemical equation. Did you understand? Yes. Now let's go on to another one. Here NaCl plus AgNO3 gives rise to AgCl plus NaNO3. First you recall the names of these compounds. NaCl, this is sodium chloride, common salt. AgNO3, it is silver nitrate. AgCl, it is silver chloride, NaNO3, this is sodium nitrate. Now see the sodium, one atom, one atom. Chlorine, one atom, one atom, balanced. Ag, one atom, one atom, that is silver. Nitrogen, one atom, one atom. Oxygen, three atom, three atom. So here, the given chemical equation only is already balanced. So we can write, it is... A balanced equation. Balanced equation. So, no need to go for balancing again. Clear? Huh? Please go through this one. BaCl2. Name this. Barium chloride. S2SO4. Hydrogen sulfate. BaSO4. Barium sulfate. HCl. Hydrogen chloride. Now, see that. Barium one atom, one atom. Chlorine, two atom. Here, one atom. Hydrogen, two atom. Or oh, here, one atom. Next, sulfur. One atom, one atom. Oxygen, four. See that barium is balanced. Chlorine is not. Hydrogen is not. Sulfur, it is balanced. Oxygen is balanced. Left is chlorine and hydrogen. These two should be balanced. Here I will write BaCl2 plus H2SO4 gives rise to BaSO4 plus HCl. Here chlorine. Let's go for balancing chlorine. Here two atoms. Here one atom. What should be multiplied? Yes, you are right. It is two. Now see the Chlorine atom is balanced. Next, hydrogen. Two atoms of hydrogen. Here, two atoms of hydrogen. So, this is the balanced chemical equation. So, this is this is a balanced chemical equation. Yes, hope that you have understood. Please go for copying from there to here. Dear students, please go through seventh one. It is like this. Write the balanced chemical equations for the following. See, so this time they have given word equations. First, convert that into symbolic equations. Then we shall go for balancing it. Here I'll write. This is calcium hydroxide. Yes, record its chemical formula. It is CaOH. 
twice plus carbon dioxide this is co2 right next calcium carbonate this is ca co3 is it not see that ca2 plus co3 2 minus therefore ca co3 then water it is h2o is it not yes let's move on to another one afterwards we can go for balancing zinc zn plus silver nitrate yes it is agno3 right or agno3 twice afterwards we shall come to know that zinc nitrate can we write zn no3 next it is silver it is ag now you check that whether these two are right are these two right here ag 1 plus no3 1 minus crossing over charges you will get ag no3 zinc it is zn 2 plus right and no3 1 minus then what do you say it is zn no3 twice right yes it is next one aluminium it is al copper chloride it is cu cl is it right no what it should be cu cl2 because cu 2 plus cl 1 minus it is cu cl q size 2 aluminium chloride see that al 3 plus cl 1 minus how do you write al cl 3 plus copper it is cu next another barium chloride this is BaCl2, Ba2 plus Cl1 minus. Potassium sulfate, KSO4. Is it right? No. Then what it should be? K2SO4. Because K1 plus SO4, 2 minus. Crossing over charges, K2SO4. Then barium sulfate, it is Ba2 plus SO4, 2 minus. Then it will be. BaSO4 plus potassium chloride K1 plus Cl1 minus. This is KCl. Now we shall go for balancing them. Let's go for balancing. Observe. Just go through that calcium, calcium, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon. These are the elements that are involved. Number of atoms of each element. Calcium 1, oxygen 1 plus 2, hydrogen 2, then carbon 1. RHS. Calcium 1, then oxygen 3 plus 1. Right? Oxygen 3 plus 1. Here oxygen 2. 2 plus 2. Hydrogen 2. Carbon. 1. See that number of atoms of each. Calcium 1. Oxygen 2 plus 2 4. 3 plus 1 4. Hydrogen 2 and 2. Carbon 1 and 1. Therefore, here number of atoms of each element on the reactant side is equal to the number of atoms of each element on the product side. Therefore, it is a balanced chemical equation. We can write here. It is a balanced chemical equation next let's move on to another one observe it here zn here on the right first atoms zn ag n and o zinc how many are there one silver one nitrogen one oxygen three the RHS side, zinc 1, silver 1, nitrogen 2 are there, oxygen 
two threes are six. So which one you will go for balancing? Okay. Uh, an element having num more number of atoms, it is oxygen. Six are there. So let us go for balancing. So on the left hand side, we have to multiply it by two. Here I write Zn plus AgNO3 gives rise to ZnNO3 twice plus Ag. Here, two atoms of oxygen. Now see the two threes are six. Three twos are six. But silver, two. Two atoms of silver. Here, let's go for multiple. Next, nitrogen, two atoms, two atoms of nitrogen, zinc one, zinc one. So it is balanced. Clear up? Yes. Now, we will move on to third. Third one is, first let us write the number of atoms of each element on reactant and product side. It will be easier. Aluminium, copper and chlorine. Aluminium how many? One. Copper one. Chlorine two. Aluminium 1, copper 1, chlorine 3. Yes. Which element you are going to select for balancing? Yes, chlorine. Because aluminium, copper, they are balanced. What should be multiplied? It is 3. Clear? And it should be multiplied by 2. I hope that you have understood. For balancing, that is 2 equalize 2 and 3, 2 should be multiplied by 3, 3 should be multiplied by 2 because 3 2s are 6, 2 3s are 6. I will write Al plus CuCl2 gives rise to AlCl3 plus Cu. Observe here where chlorine is there on that side, I will write 3. 3 and chlorine on the right hand side. It should be multiplied by 2. Now observe. 3, 2 is 6. 6 atoms of chlorine. 2, 3 is 6 atoms of chlorine. Copper. 3 atoms of copper. Here copper how many? Only 1. Hence I will multiply 3. Next. Aluminium. 2 atoms of aluminium. Here I will write 2. It is balanced chemical equation. Did you understand? Yes. Now we will move on to another one. Please go through this. BaCl2, K2SO4, BaFO4, KCl. Here, first let us write the elements. What are those? Barium, chlorine, potassium, sulfur, and oxygen. Write the number of atoms of each of these elements on the reactant and product side. Barium, 1. Chlorine 2, potassium 2, sulfur 1, oxygen 4. Did you understand? Yes. Product side. It is barium 1, chlorine 1, potassium 1, sulfur 1, oxygen 4. See that here barium is balanced. Oxygen is balanced. Then which one you will go for? Even sulfur is also balanced. Hence you can go for either chlorine or potassium. So here I will go for writing. It is BaCl2 plus K2SO4 gives rise to BaSO4 plus KCl. Hope that you have understood. Now, you may balance either chlorine or potassium. Let's go for chlorine. Here 2 is there. Hence, it should be multiplied by 2 on the right hand side. Where chlorine is there? Here. 2. So, 2 atoms of chlorine, 2 atoms of chlorine. Potassium, 2 atoms of potassium. Here, 2 atoms of potassium. Next, remaining. Barium, 1. 1 already balanced. Sulfur 1 1. Oxygen 4 and 4. So this is balanced chemical equation. So here are right. It is balanced. It is 
balanced chemical equation and this is it is a balanced chemical equation and this is it is a balanced chemical equation hope that you have understood please go for copying from day to year dear students observe eighth question this is somewhat different means what are the uh, what are the questions for which we answered in the previous one maybe fifth one sixth one or seventh one all are included here and i am going to put star mark for this because you only will come to know just by reading the question go through this write the balanced chemical equation for the following balanced chemical equation and identify the type of reaction in each case dear students we have already come to know there are different types of chemical reactions but main types are one is combination second one is decomposition third one is displacement fourth one is double displacement and fifth one is redox reaction then we have sub reactions like exothermic endothermic then photolysis electrolysis then thermal decomposition neutralization precipitation oxidation and reduction then here which you are which one you are going to consider yes we have to consider the main types got it let us consider only the main types of chemical reactions and after that if sub type is also available we can go for writing that also here the question is write the balanced chemical equation for each of the following and this is first one let us go for answering here word equation has been given convert this into symbolic equation potassium bromide what is the formula potassium bromide potassium k plus br 1 minus so it is k b r right next plus barium iodide it is ba 2 plus i 1 minus what it will be it is ba i 2 clear yes give size to potassium iodide potassium iodide observe it k 1 plus iodide i 1 minus it will be just k i then barium bromide ba 2 plus br 1 minus it is ba br 2 observe it you can come to know that oh, first let's go for balancing balanced chemical equation is how do you go for that very simple here potassium and potassium it is say number of atoms bromine here is one there is two you are going to take a an element having maximum number of atoms either bromine or iodine whatever you want you can go for taking i'll go for taking bromine here one is there here two so what should be multiplied yes you are right it is two so two atoms of bromine two atoms of bromine two atoms of potassium here one is there then sum multiply two so potassium is balanced iodine two atoms of iodine here two atoms of iodine barium one barium one so it is balanced chemical equation we have answered for first one next one they they was what type of chemical reactions are these two observe here here these are the ions here these are the ions then these two together form ki these two together form it is ba br2 right you can come to know that these are the new com sorry these are the two compounds they exchange their ions mutually to form two new compounds what it is you are right very good it is double displacement reaction can i write so it is double displacement reaction displacement reaction 
and one more important thing that you can know is i'm sorry it is potassium bromide is aqueous barium iodide that is also aqueous what happens when two aqueous solutions react with each other yes you are right a precipitate is formed then can we say that it is also a precipitate reaction main reaction is double displacement and sub reaction is precipitate reaction so then which is the precipitate they are given solid barium bromide precipitate is a solid which is obtained as a result of chemical reaction and it is insoluble in the solution clear up so all right it is it is a precipitate reaction precipitate reaction hope that you have understood yes now you are going to copy this one first we have written the balanced chemical equation then we have written the type of the chemical reaction first you have to mention the main type of chemical reaction then after that you can go for sub reaction yes copy this copy this completely from there to here after this we have few more let's move on to next one it's also very simple please go through this it is zinc carbonate what is its chemical formula here i'll write see that zn 2 plus CO3 2 minus yes then it is zn CO3 right gives rise to zinc oxide zn 2 plus o 2 minus it is two to get cancel zn o plus carbon dioxide obviously you are very familiar it is CO2 now go for balancing it see that zinc one atom one atom carbon one atom one atom oxygen three here one plus two it is already balanced the balanced balanced chemical equation equation is this is got it yes now what type of chemical reaction it is see that observe the reactant side compound what is that zinc carbonate how many are there only one compound is there but in the product side we have two compound that means one compound get split up into two compounds then what it is called yes we are right it is decomposition reaction it is decomposition reaction the chemical reaction in which a single substance get split up or decomposes into two or more new substances is called decomposition reaction it is a decomposition reaction clear up yes sub reaction under what condition zinc carbonate get split up into zinc oxide and carbon dioxide yes when heat is provided right so then what do you call the decomposition reaction which is carried out by supplying it it is called thermal decomposition reaction so only for your reference it is a thermal decomposition reaction decomposition reaction next let's move on to another part balanced equation e please go to that hydrogen no doubt it is a gas what is its chemical formula it is h2 chlorine that is also a gas cl2 then produces the compound called hydrogen chloride that is hcl which is in gaseous state they only are given so it should be balanced very simple which element has maximum number of atoms hydrogen as well as chlorine you can go for balancing any one of these two there are two atoms of hydrogen here i'll write two hydrogen is balanced how many chlorine atoms two here two clear up so it is a balanced chemical equation now you tell that what type of chemical reaction it is here 
Two reactants are there. Combine to form how many products? Only one product. What do you call the type of the chemical reaction? Yes, you are right. This is combination reaction, right? A chemical reaction in which two or more reactants, two or more substances combine chemically to form single product is called combination reaction. You are right. It is a combination reaction. Combination reaction. Hope that you have understood. Yes. After this, we have one more. Please go for copying from there to here. Yeah. Please go through this. Very simple, no doubt. It is magnesium plus hydrochloric acid gives rise to magnesium chloride and hydrogen. Obviously, we know that magnesium is a metal. Hydrochloric acid is an acid. So, metal reacts with acid to form salt with the liberation of hydrogen gas. Even you have learnt about this in your previous classes as well. So, when metal reacts with acid, produces salt with the liberation of hydrogen gas. That salt is magnesium chloride. Here, uh, first let us go for writing symbolic equation. It is magnesium Mg plus hydrochloric acid it is HCl gives rise to magnesium chloride this is should we write MgCl no then what it should be it is MgCl2 plus hydrogen gas this is H2 now let us go for balancing it very simple magnesium one atom on one atom first you choose the element having maximum number of atoms Chlorine has 2, hydrogen has 2. You can go for balancing any one. Chlorine, 2 are there. Here, 2 should be written. Then, 2 atoms of hydrogen. Here, 2 are there. Magnesium, 1, 1. So, it is balanced chemical equation. The balanced chemical equation is balanced chemical equation is this is. Next, what type of chemical equation it is? Look here, here magnesium element is there, here hydrogen element and chlorine. You can come to know that magnesium is more reactive than hydrogen, therefore it can displace hydrogen from hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride plus hydrogen. Did you understand? Now could you tell what type of chemical reaction it is? Yes, you are right. This is displacement reaction a chemical reaction in which an element present in the compound is displaced by another element which is more reactive it's called displacement here all right it is a displacement reaction displacement reaction here yes please go for writing this please go through this nine it is what do you mean by exothermic and endothermic reactions and give examples we have already discussed exo what is the meaning of exo outside thermo it is heat so heat is released after the chemical reaction hence we can define this as the chemical reaction in which heat is released along with a product is called exothermic so I'll write the definition. Then afterwards we can go for giving the example. Here I'll write. The chemical reaction, the chemical reaction in which, in which heat is released or heat, heat is given up, released along with the product, along with the product is called is called exothermic reaction exothermic reaction example see that could you tell the domestic cylinder that we use in our home it is LPG liquefied petroleum gas what is its main component Yes, you are right. It is butane. What is its chemical formula? 
it is C4 at 10. Right. <clears throat> now, on burning, it reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water vapors along with that heat energy is released. Similarly, carbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide along with heat energy. Right? Next. Here the amount of heat energy released depends on what quantity of reactants that we go for using. Now let's move on to another one. Endothermic. Endo means inside. Thermo, heat means there are some chemical reaction which takes place by absorbing the heat. They are called endothermic chemical reaction. Here I am right. The chemical reaction, chemical reaction in which, in which heat is absorbed. To form the product, to form the products is called, is called endothermic reaction, endothermic reaction. Then example for this, it is, we know that there are thermal, there are different types of thermal decomposition, sorry. Uh, decomposition reaction it may be thermal decomposition then photolysis and electrolysis the electrolysis if you want to go for taking the thermal decomposition reaction here are right kclo3 what it is potassium chloride then it absorbs the heat energy that is on heating here are right plus heat energy it uses heat energy and decomposes into it is potassium chloride plus oxygen it is not balanced it should be done by yourself next observe I'll go for taking one more example it is PbNO3 twice when heat is given to it that is, by absorbing the heat energy, it produces the compound. What are those? One is lead oxide PbO plus nitrogen dioxide, right? Plus oxygen. You know that this will be yellow color, this will be brown color. Then here, the presence of oxygen is to be tested by placing the incense stick into the test tube. If it burns brightly, we can say that oxygen gas is released. Did you understand? Yes. Please go for writing from there to here. Afterwards, I will move on to 10th one. Dear students, hope that you have written this. Next, move on to 10th one. Just stop, sorry. Why is the respiration considered an exothermic reaction? If it is exothermic, heat energy should be released along with the products. Then what are those products that are formed? Dear students, you all know that during the digestion of food items, so these food items are broken into small pieces and they contain the carbon carbohydrates, is it not? And these carbohydrates are further broken into uh, further broken into glucose. That means they are converted into glucose, and this glucose will react with oxygen, which we name the oxygen that is present in the cells of our body and produces the carbon dioxide and water along with that heat energy is also released so that is why our in our body it always maintain the some amount of heat understood so that is why respiration is to be considered as exothermic reaction here glucose react with oxygen so we inhale the oxygen and that oxygen will be present in the cells of our body and it will react with the glucose and produces the compound uh, carbon dioxide and water. The carbon di dioxide 
which we which we release which we give out to the atmosphere right here inhale of oxygen and exhale of carbon dioxide takes place that is why it is called respiration and as energy is released it is considered as exothermic reaction clear up so i'll go for writing the answer here i have written the reason as well as its explanation please go for copying this see reason why it is called exothermic because heat energy is released along with the products what are those products and what are those reactants for that here i have given the explanation see the during digestion large molecule of food are broken down into simpler substances that means they are get converted into glucose and this glucose reacts with oxygen present in the body so these are the reactants and provides the energy this is the energy release and the special name of this combustion reaction is respiration uh, as energy is released in the whole process it is called an exothermic reaction and the balanced chemical reaction has been written with respect to this yes please go for copying this dear students go through 11th one it is why are decomposition reactions called the opposite of combination reactions write the equations for these reactions just observe it if you want to answer for this question you must know the definition of both decomposition as well as combination reactions decomposition reaction is it is a reaction in which a compound get split up into or is broken down into two or more new substances whereas combination two or more substances combine to form single product clear decomposition one compound splits into two or more combination two or more substances combine to form one substance that is why it is called decomposition reaction is called the opposite of combination reaction just like this it is a plus b sorry if a and ab is there it gets split up into a plus b this is decomposition and a and b will combine to form a plus b this is a b it is combination i'll give you the example and before that you just observe the answer what i'm going to write Here, in decomposition reaction in decomposition reaction a compound compound is broken down is broken down or get split up broken down into two or more new substances and for this purpose it utilizes the energy in decomposition reaction a compound is broken down into two or more new substances whereas whereas two or more substances two or more substances combine combine chemically to form to form a single product a single substance single product is a combination reaction combination reaction combination reaction so we can write therefore therefore decomposition reaction decomposition reaction is opposite of opposite of combination of combination reaction see that in the word decomposition here only you can come to know that decomposition see composition combining decomposition splitting that's all that's why it is the opposite of combination now example before going to give example just 
I'll give you the general form. General form is A B gives rise to A plus B. It uses the energy for decomposition. It is decomposition. Uh, you can take an example of S2 acidified water. It gets split up into hydrogen and oxygen in the presence of sorry by passing electricity, right? Then similarly, A plus B gives rise to A. B. What is this? It is combination, right? Then we can write hydrogen plus oxygen. They combine to form water. S two. They are not balanced. You can go for balancing it. Here oxygen should be balanced to two. Then hydrogen here two. Then here also oxygen <coughs> should be balanced. Hence here we should write two. Did you understand? Yes. Copy this. Dear students, hope that you have copied this. Go to twelfth one. Write one equation each for decomposition reactions, where energy is supplied in the form of heat, light, or electricity. We have already discussed about it. Decomposition for decomposition reaction, energy is required. That energy it may be in the form of heat, light, or electricity. So. Based on this, that is, uh, from uh, from what form of energy the decomposition reaction is carried out. Based on this, we will classify decomposition reaction into three types. Is it not? Just uh, what do you call the decomposition reaction which is carried out by providing heat? Yes, you are right. It is thermal decomposition. Then, in the presence of sunlight. It is called photolysis or photochemical reaction. Next, third one, by passing electricity, it is called. It is electrolysis. Is it not? Yes. Now let us go for writing one one equation for each of these. Here I'll write first one. First one in the form of heat. In the form of Of heat. For your reference, I'm writing it is thermal decomposition. Thermal decomposition. Give an example for that. It is uh, here. I'll write uh, Pb NO3 twice. In many times, many times I have taken this as an example because. is also important in the examination point of view so when heat is given to pbno3 it gets split up into pbo plus no2 plus o right lead oxide nitrogen dioxide and oxygen another one kclo3 what is this it is potassium chloride then you will get kcl plus O two, right? Next, similarly, FeSO four crystals, which are pale green in color, when heat is provided to this, then it gets split up into Fe two O three plus SO two plus SO three. Please do remember these three are very important in the examination point of view. Next, let's move on to another one. What is that? In the form of light nothing but in the presence of sunlight so here i'll write in the form of light the decomposition reaction which is carried out in the presence of sunlight it is called photolysis photo p h o t o light photolysis or photochemical reaction it is example it is a g c l ag cl in the presence of sunlight then it decomposes into ag plus cl you have to balance next it is another one is agbr in the presence of sunlight 
it decomposes into Ag and Br2. Same thing. Next, third one. In the form of electricity, that is, decomposition reaction is carried out by passing electricity. In the form of electrical energy, in the form of electricity, it is electrolysis. Electrolysis. And example that is H2O. In the acidified water, if electricity is supplied, electricity is supplied, it gets split up into hydrogen and oxygen. Right? It is 2H2O here, 2H2 plus O2. Similarly, this is sodium chloride. A molten state sodium chloride is there. When electricity is supplied into this, then it gets split up into or decomposes into sodium and chlorine. You have 2 and here is 2. Got it? Yes. Please go for writing from here to there. Go through that. 13. What is the difference between displacement and double displacement reactions? Write the equations for these reactions. Dear students, if they ask you to write the differences between these two, you make two columns. Here, just they have asked, what is the difference between the displacement and double displacement? We all know that in case of displacement, more reactive element displaces less reactive element from the compound. Clear up? Whereas, double displacement, here two compounds will be there. They exchange their radicals mutually to form two new compounds. That is the, <clears throat> such a simple difference. So, I am going to write the same. Look okay. at In displacement reaction, in displacement reaction, more reactive element displaces, displaces less reactive element, less reactive element from the compound, element from a compound, right? Then, in general, we can write, it is A plus BC gives rise to, if A is more reactive than B, then it produces AC plus B get supplied. You can go for taking an example that is iron reacts with copper sulfate then copper sulfate solution <coughs> here iron is more reactive than copper therefore we get FeSO4 plus Cl clear up it is solid and this is aqueous and this is aqueous and is solid understood whereas in case of double displacement reaction in double displacement reaction. Here what happens? Here two compounds mutually exchange their ions to form two new compounds. Two compounds compounds mutually exchange mutually exchange their ions ions to form Two new compounds, right? Then, that is in general, we can write it as AB plus CD. Use size two. Yes, what is it? It is it is AD AD plus C. Clear up? So here I write example. We can write. Na2SO4 it is aqueous solution plus BaCl2 it is also aqueous sodium sulfate and barium sulfate solution these two aqueous solutions react with each other to form two new compounds right in that one will be precipitate and another one will be aqueous why we know that when two aqueous, aqueous solutions react with each other, 
then they form the precipitate. Here, sodium sulfate, in that sodium and sulfate, these are the ions. Barium chloride, barium and chloride, chloride, these are the ions. They mutually exchange their ions to form two new compounds. Look here, NaCl and BaSO4. Here I'll write. It is BaSO4. This is solid, nothing but precipitate. It will be white precipitate. Next. And another one is NaCl. Hope that you have understood. Then you can go for balancing. It is chlorine 2. Here I'll write 2. Sodium 2. And sulfur 1, 1. Oxygen 4. Oxygen 4. It is balanced. Clear up? Yes, please go for copying this. First, just to write what difference you find in these two. One general form. It's not compulsory only for the sake of understanding. But example must be given. For example, and here also. And do remember, repeatedly I have been reminding you that whenever you write the chemical equation, it should be balanced. Or write always balanced chemical equation. Yes, go for copying from there to here. Dear students, hope that you have copied. And still we have 7 more questions. Total 13 are over. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yes, 7 more questions are there. We shall go for answering these questions in tomorrow's class. Okay. Today, let us conclude the class. Before that, again it's my duty to remind you that what all the, for what all the questions for which we have answered, please learn those today itself. Don't keep anything pending and get ready for monthly test that is on coming Sunday monthly test will be conducted and the syllabus that information will be given through WhatsApp okay with this let us stop the class thank you very much